I really, I'm really sorry. I don't mean to keep clearing my throat in all my intros. Like, I'm not doing it on purpose. I, I mean, I guess, okay, like, of course I'm doing it on purpose, but I'm not doing it. I'm not planning to do it. Um, what I wanted to say was that it's really interesting because I live in a building with, um, so there's like five floors in my building or five floors. Yeah. Five floors and two halls in each floor. There's, so there's like 10 halls in the building. Um, and on one of the floors, there's one laundry room. Uh, and the laundry room probably has like, I don't know, like probably, I think it's like 12 washers, 12 dryers more or less. And it's just really interesting because there's like a whole laundry meta game because, um, there's about like 300, 400 people living in my building and like, so some, like if everyone tries to do their laundry at once, then it's not going to work. Right. And so yesterday I had to do laundry because I was down today. I'm wearing my last pair of clean boxers. So I had to do laundry. I have compression shorts. I don't want to wear them if I can help it. Um, I want to, I want to like wear actual boxers. So I was like, yesterday I was like, you know what? I'm going to plan for this. Um, I only have one pair of boxers like that are clean left. So I'm going to do laundry. So I, I did laundry, um, but it was really late. So, um, cause I did it after rehearsal. So I didn't even put it in until like, like 11. And then like I put it in the dryer at like. I don't know, like, probably, like, well, like, I put, put, oh, yeah, I probably put it in around 10.30 and then, like, put in the dryer a little after 11, um, but I've left my clothes in the dryer, right, because for me, there's no incentive to go get my clothes, um, because I can just go get them when I want to put them away, and it's, like, I have to, like, walk to the floor, so, um, yeah, that's, like, from my perspective, and, of course, everyone always yells at me because I do this, hang on, wait, I should close Facebook, um, everyone always yells at me because, what are they, I mean, oh, because it's rude, right, because if other people want to use their, the dryers, um, like, my stuff might be there, right? So, like, obviously, if I'm a good person, I should go get my laundry. But the thing is, there's a metagame, right? Because sometimes people will move your your laundry. Like, if there's no dryers and they see you, like, have your, your like, clothes sitting there and the dryer's not on, they'll take it out and they'll put it somewhere else. Um, and for me, I really don't like when people do that because, like, I always lose socks and I hate losing socks and it's just very annoying. Um, but, of course, like, I'm not upset about it because I should just go get my laundry. So it's just interesting because so now I'm thinking about, like, should I go get my laundry now? Should I go put it away? Um, and I'm thinking about, like, of course I could leave it until, like, I really, like, until, like, I need a clean pair of boxers, which is probably tonight when I shower. Um, but, but if I just leave it there, the odd, like, the longer I leave it there, like, the higher the probability that, well, the higher, like, the, I guess the probability might be the same, but, no, nah, I guess it changes over time. Yeah, like, I, I think basically, like, if I leave it there too long, it's definitely gonna get moved. So the question is, like, has it already been moved? Like, has someone already moved my laundry? Because if they have, then I can just wait forever because it's going to be moved already. But if they haven't, I should probably go get it. So, yeah. Anyway, um, this is the team I used to win Charlotte Regionals. Um, and this is the team report on the team with the Pokemon on the team that I used to win the game of with the team. Um, I finished the Regional at 7 wins and 1 loss in Swiss. So, I was 10-1 10, 10 and one overall in games. Um, this had I lost... I think I probably should have won, but that's okay. Um, it happens. Opponent played well. He had a cool team, so uh, no complaints there. But yeah, like, and I also think I should have lost some games that I won. So it all it all balances out in the end. But yeah, it was a really tough regional. I played all against a lot of people. Um, I hadn't heard of like several of the people that I played before, but they were on Twitter um, and they were good. Like I played against a lot of people like um, who are not super well known, but I wouldn't be surprised to be like if they were super well known in the future, uh, if that makes sense. So yeah, with that being said, let's just jump right into it. So when I was building this team. Um, I was basing it on my 2015 um, Worlds team, I was, which was the same six you have here, except that Tapu Bulu was Zapdos and Tyranitar was Scrafty. Um, I noticed pretty early on when I was thinking about using Charizard X, because I really like Charizard X, and especially for regionals, I just kind of like to use dumb teams. Um, I think I've only won regionals with like one team that wasn't dumb. Um, maybe two if you count my 2011 team, but most of the teams I win regionals with are, are stupid in some, like, on some level. So I, I didn't really want to use, like, standard. I didn't really want to use, like, Gothlax or, um, an extra or anything. I wanted to use something that I thought was stupid, and Charizard X definitely qualifies. Um, and, yeah, so, basically, like, so Charizard X, I thought, I, I've always thought it was really good. Um, having recovery, having, like, a good amount of bulk. Um, we can actually, let's make this into Charizard X. Oh, I ruined it. Oh, no, oh. Oh no. That's uh, Mega X. Hang on, wait. Uh, Alright, well, we're gonna fix this. Um what is roost? It hits 162 stat. Alright, well since I'm rebuilding the spread, I can tell you about this uh, the spread. This outspeeds Mimikyu and, and Tepalele. Um he's got 44, I think it's 4, 4, and 236, which should hit like 182, I think. 183. I'll double check that after. I think I believe that's correct. Um, yeah. So the spread. Okay. So 
Charizard X. So anyway, so I really like Charizard X. I really like that it has recovery with Roost. Um, Flare Blitz hits really, really hard, and Willowist being able to burn things is really nice. Um, back in the day, I mainly burned Kangaskhan and Landorus, but this season you can burn um, Landorus, you can burn Snorlax, you can burn Tabu Bulu, um, you can burn I didn't, Tyranitar. Like, there's a lot of things that like you can really benefit by burning, and um, basically, I talked about this a little bit on stream, but I really like the synergy between Charizard, Melodic, and Tapu Bulu. I don't actually remember exactly where I started. Like, I think I started with Charizard X, um, and probably, like, Milotic and Landorus. That was probably, like, my core, originally, because Charizard X and Milotic really benefit from Intimidate, and Tapu Bulu, um, helps, like, Charizard X and Milotic. Basically, okay, so here's the way it works. Ba I'm, I'll talk about the team overall, um, and then I'll talk about the individual members. So, Charizard X fast-ish. Um, it's got a good speed stat, and it benefits a lot from Milotic's Icy Wind. Milotic has Icy Wind, which helps Charizard X go faster. Um, Milotic is threatened by electric types, um, and by, on like, a, like, it's, Milotic is especially bulky, and it's threatened by things on the physical side, as well as, like, electric and grass types. Tapu really works well against, it can at least wall grass types at the very least, um, and it, it shuts down Tapu Koko, who's, like, the most prominent electric type, um, except for, you could argue Zapdos, maybe, but yeah, really good against Tapu Koko, um, Milotic is actually bulky enough to live non-Z Zapdos, like, to, to like, kind of, like, not solo it necessarily, but, um, stick around while it's on the field, Charizard X, weak to ground type attacks, Bulu cuts ground type attacks in half, um, uh, Milotic physically bulky, physically frail, especially bulky, not super frail, but definitely could use the help, Charizard X's Will-O-Wisp, um, helps on the physical side, and Bulu's Grass overrides Misty Terrain, so you can always burn, um, both, neither of these guys really love to take Tapu Lele, so Tapu Bulu being able to at least remove Tapu Lele's Psychic terrain and also do a ton of damage in return, really helpful. Charizard X and Tapu Bulu are both physical attackers, meaning that Milotic's competitive, um, protects them very well, and they're both in a fast, like, so Bulu's really fast, Charizard's really fast, so they both benefit a lot, uh, benefit a lot from Icy Wind, because, um, they'll outspeed almost everything after an Icy Wind, more or less. Um, so, yeah, that was, that's kind of like the main core of the team. Scald obviously is nice to burn blue like blue support Scald as well, but I think that's pretty much the main synergy um, They just cover each other's weaknesses really really well um, Landers T offers the intimidate and I originally had assault vest, but I after playing some singles I, I decided that I wanted more speed um, on my Landorus, so I went with choice scarf I was expecting Landers to be really really bad to be honest like I kind of just wanted it for intimidate and u-turn But it actually ended up being really good um, Tarantra is here to help with the Charizard Y matchup. It also gives me more power um, and uh, a bit like it gives me the option of going fast. It's also a fast Pokemon that benefits a lot from Icy Wind. Not quite as fast as the other two, so it, like I can't outspeed most type of Koko after an Icy Wind or after a Dragon Dance. But um, it also is my Z Move user, which is nice because strong physical Z Move plus competitive is really nice. And um, Rock typing is just like solid. It gives me more offense because like that was something that I think I lacked in the 2015 team was I didn't really have any offense at all. So um, I, I added Tyranitar and Bulu as well to add more offense, and I think they work really well. Um, weak to fighting type attacks. It's the only fighting weaknesses we've got. As you can see, three resistances plus a, the Pokemon that can burn. Um, benefits from Landorus, especially like especially bulky naturally, physically bulky. It's just bulky overall naturally. Uh, weak to ground type attacks. Tab Bulu cuts Earthquake in half. Um, weak to fairies. Fairy is like a little bit of a problem for this team, but. Um, yeah, just having a fast Z move is pretty nice, to be honest. Am I lagging? Hang on. Now it looks like we're not lagging, which is good. And, yeah, okay. Anyway, and then the last member, Aegislash, kind of just like the catch all mon. Um, it's there for matchups that are bad, um, so that you can slow the pace down with Toxic and kind of make the play, play a slightly, well, like, not a slightly, like, play a much slower game if you want to. Um, just really slow down the pace of the match, and, um... Also, to help with, like, Metagross and Tapu Lele, I wanted a Steel-type, I didn't want, like, Ferrothorn or anything, I thought Aegislash was a good Steel-type, and I chose to use a bulkier, more, like, specially defensive, slower Aegislash, both for Kuma-O, which is a huge problem with this team. I consider Celesteela, but I like Aegislash better, um, and also just for Metagross and Lele, and just, like, it's not there for, for really damage, it's there kind of for the threat of doing damage, and, um, for its typing, and its ability, it's, like, it still hits hard even with that investment. So, anyway, let's go over the spreads. Um... Charizard X, outspeed Tapu Lele, KOs most Tapu Lele that have no investment. Um, so yeah, KOs Tapu Lele that aren't bulky most of the time, I should say. Uh, the rest is in bulk. Um, in HP, because I, I considered investing in the defenses, but as you can see, it's, de it's physical defense is good. Special defense could be better, but it was like, you couldn't like change Specs Moonblast very well or anything. Um, and because you're going to be using Flare Blitz, you're going to be taking Recoil, so I figured HP was just better, excuse me, overall. Um, yeah, I've already talked a bit about the, the moves. Protect is obviously mandatory to keep Charizard X around. Roost as well. Um, on my kind of build, I really like Willowis. It's a great, in my opinion, like the burn status is really, really good. Um, it helps the, the team play at like a slower pace, um, especially considering so many wands have recovery on the team. Like Charizard and Milota can both heal themselves back to full, and Aegislash heals over time, and Blue heals himself as well. So um, with Horn Leech as well, as well as leftovers, and Aegislash has leftovers and can benefit from, from grassy terrain. So um, yeah, so that's kind of Charizard. I mainly use Charizard as 
it was it was nice because it, it could they could either play offensively or defensively depending on what i wanted um this team doesn't have a lot of options for speed control so being able to have like charizard with honestly really good typing like being able to resist electric and grass and um i guess that's kind of the main ones fire as well resist fire really well um with charizard and tyranitar my charizard y matchup was just like felt really really uh favorable as long as they didn't play as long as like depending on the team of course but um yeah flare blitz it's like a really strong offensive move you have to be careful because you take uh recoil from it but um yeah charizard really good mon i like it a lot uh, i really like the set i think it's really strong and um yeah oh i should probably talk about yeah anyway the reason i brought I, like i said in stream like, i was originally gonna bring this team to dallas but i was really afraid about Kamo, um kamu and so I, I brought steelix instead i didn't play any Kamo at either tournament thankfully but um steelix actually did a really good job against Kamo, so that was fine but um, anyway, but then for this tournament, I saw, like, Intimidate Incineroar came out, so I was already thinking about my Lodic, and then I was thinking about how Intimidate Incineroar was really good against the Como O team, like, um, Justin Karras, Cases, and, uh, Lukumir, like, that, that kind of team, the Mega Gengar, Whimsicott, uh, Tepa Bulu team, Incineroar was really strong against that, and so I figured, like, maybe there'd be less Como O at the top, and, um, there would also be a lot more Incineroar, although I think I played, wait, hang on, I played, like, a ton of my, of, uh, Tepa Fini, it was actually nuts, like, I played, hang on, let me see, sorry, okay, we've got, let me, I'll count out loud, We've got Incineroar. Oh, never mind. Okay, we've got one Incineroar. We've got one Feeny. We've got neither. We've got two Feeny. Three Feeny. Two Incineroar. Four Feeny. Two Incineroar. Four Feeny. Neither. Okay, I guess I played less than I thought. Yeah, neither. Five Feeny. Three Incineroar. Okay, I actually played way less than I thought. Um, Ashton had... Alright, I played 6 Feeny, which actually isn't that much. And I counted Ashton twice, so... Yeah, okay, I actually didn't play that many Feeny or Incineroar. It, it felt like I did. But I, yeah, I didn't play that many Incineroar, but I think every team except for Sean Bannon had Intimidate. So, I thought my... Obviously, like, I've always liked my Lodic. I think it's, like, a really underutilized mod. I think it's um has the potential to be really strong. So, really like my Lodic. Like I mentioned, like, the real the real reason I didn't bring this team before was Kama'o. I felt like I could beat everything else except for Kama'o. Um, and I figured there'd be less come out. So anyway, yeah, that's Charizard. That's the spread. That's what it does. Fast. Enough to outspeed Lele. Didn't feel like outspeeding Kangaskhan. Didn't expect to see that much Kangaskhan. Didn't really care about outspeeding Charizard Y. Most of them weren't running max speed anyway. Um, and I had Tyranitar as well. So, Tyranitar. Really straightforward. Um, people are running Tyranitar, right? Tyranitar, right? They're running weakness policy. I think that's bad. I think Dark Z is really good. Um, the ability to have, like, a one-time really powerful move is just very nice. Um, I went Jolly, obviously I lose some power, but the speed is important. Being able to outspeed Mega Metagross at plus one, being able to, uh, to uh, sorry, being able to outspeed Persian, um, is nice. Also, you can do some cool stuff with, like, dra if you Dragon Dance and Icy Wind on the same turn, you can outspeed pretty much anything. I think you even get Ludicolo, for example, um, if they switch into that. Um, the okay, here's the real reason I like Dark Z on Tyranitar, because versus Aegislash, you can Dark Z and then Crunch, and that's really big in my, in my opinion, um, because... Because, 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 it hurt, like, basically, in my opinion, like, the best way, the way that I try to play Pokemon is to minimize mind games, um, or minimize reads as much as possible, like, I try to win with, like, I, of course I can make reads, I can make predictions, but I, overall, when I play, I tr I'm trying to play to win to, like, a certain, like, um, so that basically, regardless of what my opponent does, I'm always winning, that's, like, my goal, um, so play kind of in a way that's non-interactive, in a sense, and, um, without Dark Z, you don't have the option of, like with Aegislash, like let's say they're sub Aegislash or their Sacred Sword Aegislash, like Ashton was. Um, and a couple other people also had Sacred Sword. I think my top four opponent as well also had Sacred Sword and his Aegislash. So if they're if they're Sacred Sword Aegislash and you have Tyranitar, like let's say let's say let's say best case scenario, you're already plus two somehow. Let's say like you switch into a U turn, and so you can KO the Aegislash or they can KO you, but um it's just like it, I really don't I like I super don't like that mind game of like, okay, if I crunch I win and if they if I crunch and they like king shield then i lose and if they if i crunch and they attack then i win or um if i you know like there's, there's just like i just don't like that mind game and so dark z was really nice because um i didn't have another mon that really wanted the z crystal on the team like either age slash or blue could have it but on this team i thought the other items were better so that was already nice but um turn like turn is really high base attack and just being able to play that like to win the mind game versus age slash was in my opinion really nice um so even though that didn't actually come into play that often it was still like the fact that i had the option was nice um moves are pretty standard i didn't feel like i need to low kick i i don't yeah normally i don't feel like tyranitar needs low kick of course it's nice when you have it i had it in dallas um help versus other tyranitar but and this team has a slight i would say this team has a slight tyranitar weakness depending on the set but it's it's not i wouldn't say it's huge it's like tyranitar and trick room plus 
a Pokemon that can threaten Landorus and Boo. Like, uh, Tyranitar and, like, strong Porygon 2 with Thunderbolt is, like... And if it's, like, weakness policy Tyranitar and, like, a specific Porygon 2, that could be problematic, but they also have to set up at some point without being um, intimidated, so... Yes, that's good. Um, pretty much all I want to say about Tyranitar. Rock Slide is inaccurate, so you got to be careful with that. But it's also it also um, it's like high risk, high reward in my opinion um, with Rock Slide. And I mean we all know about Rock Slide, so um, you cannot speed Scarf Lander T after after a boost, so you have to be careful about that. But um, really like Tyranitar. I like I like the option that this like gave me of going a little bit faster and, and um, exerting more pressure. Um, I use that in finals against Ashton really well uh, in both game one and game two. Like I didn't use Tyranitar a lot during the tournament because he was mainly there to uh, check opposing Tyranit uh, opposing Charizard, but um, he did really it did really really well in um, in top eight as well. Game two, I got a, I got Dragon Dance up and kind of just won the game. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's all I want to say about Char uh, Tyranitar. My Lodic, I love my Lodic. I think it's a great Pokemon. I know everyone's uh, online is like, oh, my Lodic's really bad, but I honestly think that. It's just because people are using it wrong and not using it intelligently. Um, I think my Lodic is really good. Because here's the thing about my Lodic. It forces your opponent into a situation where... Let's say we've got my Lodic and Charizard X, right? As you can see, he's got 44. He's got... Sorry, he's got 156 attack stat. Um, he's got 120 base power move. And he's got Tough Claws, which is a 1.2 times boost. I, I can't... I, I think it's 1.2. Anyway, so he hits really hard. He Oko's Tapalele, which is... Um, not super effective. He does a ton of Zapdos depending on the build. Regardless of the build, he does a ton of Zapdos. Um, really strong Mon, right? So let's like you're like okay, but it's the physical attack. So you want to cut it. You want to like cut the power of that physical attack. But if my Lodic's on the field, you can't do that. Um, and the thing about my Lodic is, I think the reason why people think my Lodic is bad is because. They're trying to use my Lodic as like an offensive mon where like you get a boost and you win the game. And in my opinion, that's not the way it's supposed to operate. Um, the way that I use my Lodic is I use it really like a lot for positioning where you get my Lodic into a position where it like can't really, um, it's like really, it, the thing about my Lodic is it's so hard to remove because look at this bulk. It's got 169 special defense stat with 202 HP. This, um, this spread outspeeds base 100s after an Icy Wind. Um, it lives Gigavolt Havoc from Tapu Koko out of terrain, and the rest is in defense. Um, so that's very bulky. I, I, like, I lived a Gigavolt terrain, uh, Gigavolt terrain, Gigavolt Havoc from a Koko in Grassy Terrain and won a game because of it um, in in Charlotte. So it's, like, very bulky. Um, not only is it very bulky, it also controls the speed with Icy Wind, and it, after two Icy Winds, it all speed everything. After one Icy Wind, it speeds a ton. Uh, it can burn things with Scald, and it can heal its health, and it all like it automatically heals its health. Health. <laughs> it automatically heals its health after um, the berry as well when it gets low. So it's extremely hard to remove. It can burn. It has speed control. It can heal itself. Um, and it, it really locks down positioning because your opponent can't icy wind it if, like, if they don't want to give you a boost. They can't intimidate. Even Moonblast will drop your special attack sometimes and give you a plus one boost. Um, they, like Muddy Water from Tapafini, like they're running a risk every time they use it. Um, so I really like my load again. I think it's super good. Hang on, let me check. We're lagging. Looks like we're about fine. Um, yeah. Um, I really like my Lodic. I think it's. I just think it's such. It's like such a powerful positional tool. And there's a lot of things you can do with it. So for example, in my top four set, I thought my opponent was going to lead Gardevoir, so I led Landorus in my Lodic. And if he traced Intimidate, then he would have given me a boost. Um, immediately without even leading it. Um, oftentimes I wouldn't lead my Lodic, and I would. The thing about using Scarf Landorus T is that, uh, you can easily switch it in. Um, you can, like, so, like, you can lead Scarf, Landorus, T, and Charizard, for example, and that's, like, a Pokemon, that's, like, a lead combination that really, like, uh, encourages people to switch in their own Landorus or Incineroar, depending on, like, their position at the moment, and you can just sw hard switch Landorus out into Milotic. Um, I did that a lot, um, versus somebody I, like, led Landorus, and, or maybe, I don't even know what I led, but I led something, and he had Manetric, and I switched Milotic in, and he Mega Evolved, and gave me a plus two boost immediately, so, Milotic, in my, like, in my opinion, is super good. Um, competitive is an amazing ability. It's so bulky. It's got great stats. It's extremely hard to remove. Um, and Scald is really nice. It supports the team well. I think it's a great Pokemon. I don't really understand how people think it's bad. Um, yeah. So, mentioned what the spread did. Talked about my Lodic. It's really good in my opinion. Offers good team support. Supports the team well. That's all I want to say. Aegislash. Okay. Probably should have talked about this last because it's like kind of like the one member that stands up the most. Look at this. Look at the special defense stat. Did you know it gets this high? Um, this SP is, let me double check to make sure that's correct. Because I might have gone one point faster. 93 times 1.5. This should be 138. Yeah, 139. Um, okay, so this has speed Como after if it get, if we can get it to Icy Wind. Um sorry, if we can get it to minus one. So that's one or two icy winds. Um 
This is the Como counter. It's the counter. This is the, this is the one answer to Como. Uh, get a Toxic off, get Sand up, and then just stall for a little bit. Um, it does lose, lose its health relatively fast. Um, my Lodic is also okay versus Como, but it's not great. Um, this is really here for Metagross Tepu Lele, uh, because it's actually not here to beat them. It's kind of just here so I can lead Aegislash and then hard switch into Bulu, so I can overwrite the terrain if they lead with Metagross and Lele. Um, and also just to be a defensive um, pivot into the thing, into the into the um, into the lead. So yeah that's that um really bulky king shield substitute shadow ball toxic with leftovers this might look a little weird because i know we're used to seeing um ghost dmz offensive age slash and honestly in, in general i think that's probably better it's really annoying this doesn't ko um gengar this doesn't ko mega metagross even if they have no bulk um so that's like annoying but the thing is i felt like on my team this made sense because there's a couple matchups where you want to slow down the pace a lot um like for example versus uh embc 29 eduardo cunha um, he has like this, he had this, um, Metagross, Zapdos, Tepafini, Landorus, Amoongus, and Tyranitar team, and versus that team, like, basically versus Zapdos, that's a Pokemon where, like, you really want to get a Toxic off, because although you have Tyranitar, and although you have Charizard, kind of, um, if they have, like, Tepafini as a partner, it just, like, if it's, like, Heat Wave Zapdos with Fini as a partner, which, um, Ed's team was, especially with Specs, uh, you're just gonna, like, take too much damage in too short of a time, uh, to really feel good about like your like to make basically to make the matchup um it made the matchup really hard and so by adding bulky toxic sh uh, sub shadow ball aegislash it allowed you to play like it like basically like you could toxic the zapdos if you got sand up that was awesome but even if you didn't like you and then you could just like stall because and you have the bulk and the the switch inch to stall for a little bit um and it just like really swings the matchup in your favor also like with bulu being able to overwrite feeny sometimes like sometimes people would have a really good matchup versus bulu but they'd also have feeny and if you look at the team like this team doesn't have really anything for Feeny outside of Bulu, so it was nice to be able to kind of switch in Bulu and Toxic the Feeny, because that way, like, even if, like, you weren't able to get into the position with Bulu later in the game, you still had, like, a way to beat it. Um, and I did beat, I did, I did Toxic and beat a Feeny in top four, um, by Toxicing it with Aegislash before fainting and then beating it with Milotic in the one-on-one, -on -one. um, so that was cool. Um... Yeah, Shadow Ball is the only stab I think makes sense. There's not a ton of normal types. Porygon 2 was the other thing. So Porygon 2, Eduardo's other team, yeah, his ugh, his teams are just like super hard to beat. So he had this uh, Porygon 2, Araquanid, um, you guys know the team, Incineroar, uh, Coco, sometimes it's Bulu, sometimes it's something else. But anyway, like one Prog, the Prog special event, I believe, and it was like, I looked at the top eight teams and it was, it was all over there, and I didn't play a single one of those. But versus that team, this Age of Slash is super important because... Toxic is just really good. Um, leftovers might seem like a weird item choice when we have 50% berry, but the thing is that with Leftovers and Tapu Bulu, you actually are able to heal a ton of health, and with Substitute like being active very often, um, I really like Leftovers over the berry, especially because um, Aegislash, since it has low base HP, it's not uncommon to get it down to like 30 or 40% or 50% before KOing it, so um, I really liked Leftovers here. Uh, it allows it basically in Grassy Terrain to function as Poison Heal. Um, and also to kind of beat anything, like not anything, but a lot of things in the one-on-one. -on -one. If you got down to like a one-on-one -on -one situation and you were faster, which wasn't that hard with Milotic's Icy Winds. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I basically spent most, I didn't bring Aegislash very often, and when I did, I spent most of my time in shield form. Um, basically just toxic stuff, stalled, king shield, and occasionally I launched a shadow ball, but for the most part it was there for toxic and kind of just like for the presence of it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I want to say about Aegislash. The speed, like, so basically the spread, max HP. Um, enough speed to outspeed Coma O after, if you get it to minus one, which is normally one or two icy, well, at least normally it's two icy wins, um, because I don't know, like, when you wouldn't, but, or, like, when they would, uh, not boost, but, and then the rest in special events, because we've got enough physical support here, I didn't feel like I needed the special attack, and, it, like, there was a couple situations, just in testing, where, um, it was nice to have the bulk, and the other thing is that versus Porygon 2, I normally lead Aegislash, like, Aegislash Landorus, and it was nice because with this much special defense, you gave it an attack boost, um, versus everything on the team, which when I had, like, offensive Aegislash, uh, I, I, like, I tried this set with Ghostium for a little bit, like, double Z-move, but, um, you give them a special attack boost, and that was actually kind of problematic. So it was nice just to have, like, Milotic or Aegislash as a lead and kind of guarantee that they get, um, a physical attack boost over a special attack boost. But yeah, the special defense doesn't do anything specific, it's just what was left over. Um, I might have considered putting some in defense for Metagross, like, Stomping Tantrum, but, yeah, I didn't. Um, Landers T, thought this was gonna be super bad, ended up being good, was really surprised. Um, Earth Power, U-Turn, Sludge Bob, Hidden, uh, Hidden Power Ice. Earth Power and U-Turn were mandatory. Uh, I was really close to running Psychic or Fly on Landorus to help the Como matchup. Like, I was, like, really close. Um, but in the end, I decided, I was like, you know what? I just feel like this is, like, in my mind, this is so suboptimal that I just really can't. Like, I'm using, like, I'm giving up a move that's, like, good overall for, like, one matchup that I might not even play. So I was like, I'm just going to beat Como if I play it. 
Um, and so I didn't play any, so that was good. Um, Earth Power and U-Turn are mandatory. Scarf Lander is, so the reason I want Scarf is because the team is overall pretty slow, and although you can support speed with, um, Milotic, I thought, like, just from playing singles, I, I just, like, I've, I'm coming to realize how important speed is. Um, and even though Landorus doesn't hit super hard, let me tell you what makes me mad. I have a list of things that make me mad, but first of all, Landorus, Earth Power, doesn't KO Mega Metagross. Mega Metagross isn't even that bulky. With no bulk, it doesn't KO all the time. It KOs, like, one in four. Isn't that stupid? I think that's super stupid. And the other thing about, like, oh my god, sometimes, like, sometimes you do turn the Mega Metagross to put it in range, but then your stupid Bulu would heal it back up. It was so frustrating. Um, yeah, but... Maybe it's for the best, maybe it's better for the metagame if you don't KO with Earth Power, but it made me really mad because I was like, oh, I'll run Special Scarf Landorus and I'll oak all the Metagross, but then you couldn't even do that because, <laughs> yeah, they don't, like, it doesn't KO. Um, the good news is that Metagross at the moment don't run anything for Milotic. They have Stomping Tantrum, which doesn't hit very hard, so, um, yeah. Anyway, Scarf Landorus was really good. It's good for, like, a number of situations. Um, Mega Manectric, uh, Chapa Coco, being able to outspeed those Pokemon is really nice. Being able to outspeed some Scarf Pokemon, though not Lele. Um, was nice, uh, was really good because outspeeding other Landorus for the most part, outspeeding Thunderous T, which I played against, um, surprisingly, which is good. Um, when I build teams, I don't like to have pieces that conflict with each other. Like, for example, this team wouldn't really make sense if it was Charizard Y and Tyranitar, in my opinion, because, um, yeah, I just don't like to have pieces that get in, like, Pokemon that get in each other's way. Uh, I think that's, like, I don't know, I, tr I really try to make my teams not, like, mess, like, not get in the way of each other. Um, and so I wasn't going to be physical Scarf Landorus, and, um... Yeah, anyway, I thought Landorus, I, basically, I wanted a Pokemon with Intimidate, um, I wanted, like, I basically, I wanted something with Intimidate that was mandatory, and I wasn't gonna take Incineroar, because I had Charizard, and I had Scrafty on the first team, but I, it was too slow, in my opinion, um, and I, like, wasn't gonna take Mega Manextra, because I had Charizard, or Mega Salamence, because I had Charizard, so, um, Landorus just made the most sense, and so I wasn't gonna be physical, because I had Tepa Bulu, so I knew I was gonna be using Earth Power, I knew U-Turn was really good, um, the last two moves I was really torn on, I'm glad I chose what I did, Sludge Bomb surprisingly did, did well here, um, although I wasn't really expecting it to, um, it was definitely, it was probably my least move, used move, although Hidden Power Ice didn't get that much usage either, but, um, yeah, Sludge Bomb I was considering being knock, uh, uh no, not knock off, yeah, oh yeah, knock off, because of, uh, Snorlax, like, if you look on paper, the Snorlax matchup isn't super good, I, I think I can beat it, I think I have the tools to beat it, I beat the Snorlax I played, um, at regionals, but Snorlax definitely is, like, a problem, but I didn't really think knock off on a Scarf Lander is just gonna help too much against that, so I stuck with Sludge Bomb, and then, like I mentioned, I almost used Psychic or Fly versus... Um, to help with the Como O matchup, but I thought it was stupid, and I'm really glad I stuck with Hidden Power Ice because it, it single-handedly won me at least one game, probably several. Um, I think the thing about Landorus, it's kind of similar to Milotic in that special Landorus, you're not getting Okos for the most part. Like, every once in a while, someone will be lazy and leave their Manectric or their Coco versus you, um, or their Aegislash and Shield form, and you can Earth Power it, but for the most part, you're not using it for Okos, but um, because it's so, it's kind of like, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Scarf Garchomp in that um, I think Scarf Garchomp was better at its job, but with Landorus, if you position it correctly, it's really easy to, to get Landorus in the field and then just U-turn out because it's so fast. Um, and, like, that lets you, like, lead off immediately with Intimidate. But the thing is, like, if you preserve your Landorus and you you spend, like, let's say you, like, like if you Scald into Metagross, you can always KO with Earth Power, you know? And if you get a little bit of damage on Aegislash, you can always KO with Earth Power, you know? Um, it, Hidden Power Ice doesn't always KO Salamence and it doesn't KO uh, AV Landorus or even just Bulky Landorus. But if you hit those things with even, like, a Scald or a Shadow Ball, all of a sudden they're in range of... Hidden Power Ice. Um, like, in finals, Ashton switched to Salamence into my Charizard at minus one, Flare Blitz. Um, but because of the, just because of the chip damage, and this is another thing I'm learning from singles, like, the idea of chip damage for KOing stuff. Um, like, just because of the chip damage, it was in range of Hidden Power Ice, and that, like, put in a lot of pressure. Whereas he would have actually lived to Hidden Power Ice if he was at full. So, it's just kind of stuff like that, um, that I'm thinking about. So, Oh, yeah, that's Landorus. Um, surprisingly good. Hidden Power Ice, surprisingly good. Um, it, it KOs other Landorus if they're no bulk. So if they're, like, Scarf Physical Landorus, or um, if they're, like, Max Speed, you know, Max Attack, Z-Move, then you have, like, a good chance to KO them with Hidden Power Ice, but I wasn't normally banking on that. Um, it is nice, though, because a lot of things that you would chip down, you can U-turn, or that you can't Oko, you need, like, a little bit of chip, you can U-turn and then come back in later for it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say about Landorus. And lastly, Bulu. Um, this is my spread. I'm really glad I went Jolly Max Speed. So the, the two things I changed from my Dallas team um, were making Landorus from Scarf, sorry, from Assault Vest. It was it was it was Earth Power U-Turn Knockoff and Psychic on my Dallas team with Assault Vest, and um, Bulu was slower. It was like um, just it was like one point faster than my Lodic or one point slower, and it had Superpower over Swords Dance. But I went Jolly Max Speed, which actually was so good in this tournament. Like I outsped Charizard, I outsped I outsped at least two Charizard that I can think of. Um, I outsped. 
um, every Feeny, I think, um, it was just really, really good, in my opinion, um, Swords Dance was not good, so, basically, what, what I was thinking here is, Bulu is my Feeny answer, um, Feeny is a bit of a problem for this team, like I mentioned, so I really needed Bulu to beat Feeny, um, so I knew that I didn't want to go, like, max speed, max attack or something, because I need, I wanted the bulk, because Vex Feeny hit so hard, so I went max HP, um, almost, um, this, this HP gives you, um, enough that you heal one more health from Grassy Train, divisible by 16, uh, if you have Bulu on your team, you want to be, like, divisible by Grassy Terrain. If you don't have Bulu on your team, you want to be one less than... You want to be 16 and minus 1 uh, for turn to turn normally. Just, like, some spread things. Sorry, this video is super long. Um, I want a Figgy Berry for the recovery because, uh, like I said, I didn't need Bulu necessarily to do damage most of the time. I was kind of just using him as, like, a, a check to Feeny and a check to Coco. So, I really wanted the recovery. Um, and... I don't know why. I just kind of was, like, I feel like max speed is a good call. Um, I had Swords Dance, I liked, I, I think in theory, the, the theory was like, Milotic plus Bulu is kind of cool, because with this much speed, you had speed like, pretty much everything, um, not Feromosa, but you had to be like, Mega Manectric, um, you had to be like, I mean, it doesn't really matter about Feromosa, nobody's using it, you had to be like, neutral nature of Feromosa, not plus speed, um, but, the real thing is just like, you're surprisingly fast, and you catch people off guard with that, so, um, yeah, so, I was like, I want to use max speed, I don't remember why, I was just like, I was like, I feel like this will be good, it pairs really well with Icy Wind from Milotic, you can unspeed everything, um, and I put Swords Dance on, I used it once in the entire tournament, and it was immediately O-Code, so, uh, that was game four, top, top four, game two, game four, top four, game two, so if you want to see Swords Dance in action, you can see that, um, Superpower, Hidden Power, Fire, Substitute, like, there's other, like, if I were to use this team again, I might, I probably wouldn't use Swords Dance, but I, I like, Swords Dance is really good versus some Snorlax teams, and I just didn't play that many Snorlax, so, um, yeah, so it's kind of, like, up to you if you want to use this team, what you want to do. Um, yeah, I rent, a uh, dual grass stab might seem silly, but I actually really like it. I don't really feel like, I feel like out of everything, like, Protect Woodhammer and, and Horn Leech, like, I feel like those moves are non-negotiable, because there are times where you want the recoil and you want the power, and there are times where you want to heal the health back, so, um, that's why I ran double grass, and, like, since Bulu already, like, basically, like, these moves are 2.25 stronger than any non-stab move because of the grassy terrain and, um, the stab, so they, they just hit super hard, um, like, I'm pretty sure resisted wood hammer stronger than neutral, yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely stronger than neutral horn leech, for, or neutral, um, superpower, you know, so, um, yeah. Spread might seem kind of derpy, uh, like, for example, um, in top, in finals game one, uh, game two, I wood hammered Ashton's Feeny, and it, like, lived with, like, just a few HP, so, that's an example of, like, how more attack would be good, but I, I really like the spread, actually, even though it's super stupid. I think it's funny that a lot of these spreads are, like, 252, 252, like, max HP, max HP, Max attack, like, that's, like, they're all, they're all, like, except for my Lodic, they're all kind of 252, 252, I mean, Age Slash isn't really, but, um, yeah, 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 Bulu is really good, I'm glad I won a regional with Bulu, I think Bulu is, like, a good mon, um, especially this year, last year, maybe not, um, but this year I definitely think it is, also pairs well with my Lodic's competitive, so, I feel like there's one more thing I wanted to say, oh, uh, this team is funny because, like, the only, the only plus attack or special attack nature is, um, Landorus T, um, and yeah everything else is plus special defense plus special defense plus speed plus speed plus speed so i thought that was kind of funny um there's not that much like the only attack investment is landorus and <laughs> tyranitar they're like charizard has like a little bit of course but like charizard is max attack no like not a new like not a boosting nature and landorus is max special attack modest nature but like there's four there there's four there there's four there like there's 44 there so um not the most offensive team but i really liked it a lot um I think that's all. I know this has been super rambly. Sorry, I didn't script anything out. I know some people don't like that, but I hope you enjoy it. I'll put a link to a website called pastebin.com where you can find a an exportable of the six Pokemon and the details of them so that you can inspect them yourself and use them on an online simulator if you so choose. It's in the description. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if there's something I forgot to cover or anything. So, yeah, really like this team. Hope you guys enjoy it, too, if you um, are interested in trying it out. And, yeah, I think that's it. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.